Welcome to FM Corner. Today we're going to do something new. First podcast. Uh, joining me today is Jeff Dover. Jeff is the facility resource manager for RIFMA, uh, also known in layman's terms as the precision guesswork specialist. And we're going to talk a little bit about Jeff's career, uh, kind of how he got started in facilities, and then his transformation over into RIFMA and being accountable for RIFMA gifts. So, Jeff, how are you? I'm doing fine today, Danny. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. We had a couple little hiccups because uh, I'm not really good at this, but uh, we think we got it all worked out and got some good That's information right. to share. The seventh time is the charm. <laughs> Uh, you weren't supposed to tell about. It. All right, let's uh, get started here. Let, let's start out with your facility career, Jeff. How how did you get involved in facilities? Well, you know, does any you know? Of course, you know we're we're kind of on the older end of the spectrum. But how does anybody really know that they're going to end up in facilities? I you know I sure didn't even think about it when when I went to college and. I was working for a, a local steel mill in Middletown, Ohio, and, and times were tough in the early 80s. So I decided to, to see if uh, possibly find another job because it was uh, cars weren't selling. We were in a recession and all that. And I, I saw the in the newspaper, because that's what you used back in those days, <laughs> that Honda Rosa restaurants, which my first wife at the time was working there, um, and I, it, they needed a, a national energy manager. Well, I was doing energy management uh, on our natural gas, electricity, and and coke oven gas our, at our steel mill. So I thought, well, I'll, let's give this a shot. So I went ahead and threw the resume in there, and lo and behold, that's how I hired on in 1985 with Ponderosa Restaurants. And then about, uh, and that's that was under the facilities of, umbrella. But then I worked uh, as an energy manager for a couple of years, and then actually went into into facilities as a director of facilities after that. And and then I'm, then was with, um, we merged with Steak and Allen Bennigan's, we, we became Metro Media, and I was a director there for a long time, and then a director at TGI Fridays. But again, how does, you know, most of my career I saw, like at, at um, Ponderosa, we had uh, three, facility managers, and then we had 45 service technicians. And the facility managers were ex-technicians. And I think, at least in the older older days, I think that's how the progression kind of went. How'd you get started? <laughs> kind of the same thing. Um, as I was listening to your story, I'm like, boy, those really parallel. No, no idea about facilities. I uh, started working for Ruby Tuesday's warehouse and uh, commissary in 1978. I had been working at Pizza Hut and I was working the weekend shifts Friday and Saturday, you know. And So you're going to school and you're working in the con yeah. commissary. Yeah, and, okay. and I wanted to get out of working Friday and Saturday nights because I was young and, you know, I wanted to go out and stuff like that. I'm like, here I am flipping pizzas all night till 2 a.m., you know, and so a buddy called me who, who had worked at Pizza Hut, and she said, hey, you want to come work at the commissary? I'm like, Ruby Tuesday. I'm like, what is that? She told me. I said, well, I got to go to school. And she said, yeah, but they're going to let you go to school in the morning, and then you come here in the afternoons and load trucks and cook food and so on. I'm like, sure. And I asked the most important question at the time, which is, do I get paid every Friday? She said, yeah, I'm, I'm in. Didn't even ask how much. I don't care. As long as I get paid on Friday, I'm good. And I started doing that, and they came to me and said, do you want to be the purchasing person? I'm like, purchase what? And they said, equipment, <laughs> small wares, stuff like that. Yeah, sure. You make a deal. How hard can that be? I'm, I got it. So I started doing that, and about a year or two later, they came to me, and Ruby's had maybe seven, eight restaurants at the time, maybe. And seven or eight. Yeah, said, hey, you want to be the facility guy? I said, well, I don't, I don't fix stuff that's not in my wheelhouse. And I no, 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 we don't care. What you do is you find somebody to fix it, and you make sure it gets done. It gets done for the right amount of money. Yeah, got it. And I mean, literally, no, nothing about facilities. I think, though, what people share in that is the ability to get things done and the ability to manage stuff. And, and I think if you have that as kind of your key, it, it helps and and in the facility world. But I think a lot of people, like you said, they either were former techs and, and they decided to move into that role or they were asked to, 
or you were just around the industry and all of a sudden you got a couple of traits that seems to work and can you be a facility person and there you go. I, I, I think that's a lot. I think you're right on the right on the money there because there there was a, a few cases where uh, I promoted some techs into in the facility manager position and it just didn't work out. They they were better techs than they were managers. They they weren't able to handle all the projects and and you know they they wouldn't let they wouldn't delegate yeah. and it was uh, it, it's a, it's a special it's a special breed that's that's for sure. But so what was your title then? Facilities man. Facilities manager, facilities slash purchasing, I think, at the time. Okay. Again, when you have seven and eight, seven or eight restaurants and you're brand new, titles are yeah. nothing. You know, um, the words they call you are probably more that you can associate with <laughs> is, 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 hey, you, you know, can you do this? Yeah, okay. You know, it, it wasn't tied to a job description or or any of that sort of stuff. There were just things you did, you know. And you, I, I bet that was fun though, watching it grow like that. I mean, that's- oh, most, most fun I ever had in my life because you worked really hard. You had no idea it was gonna grow like that. You weren't in it for that. You just, you were there, you know, and you just played a role. And then as you grew, and, and I was lucky and I made a joke about it many years at Ruby Tuesday, I'm like, I'm the best facility guy y'all have ever had. And guys will start laughing. They go, you're the only guy we ever had. I said, well, that part doesn't matter. What matters is I'm the only guy. And But there was beauty in that, though, Jeff, of being around for a very long period of time. Because as operations people, and you know how important operations people are for a facility manager to do their job, there was trust because I was the constant in their life. When they started in the company as a system manager, I was there. When they became a manager, I was there. When they became a director, I was there. When they became a regional or a vice president of an area, it's still me. It That part never changed. And, and I grew with them in my role through their career. And so that trust was there. Yeah, that's to a great be able point. to work together, and that was huge. And a lot of people don't don't get. I was very lucky, very lucky in that. That's a that's a big deal. I mean, even in today's generation, uh, taking over as a facility manager or director of facilities of a chain, you don't you don't have the trust of the C suite people initially. Right. You you grew with them, and so yeah. that's that's a big deal because there is some intimidation. Um, I mean, I know in my in the beginning of, of my career like that, I mean, it was kind of intimidated to to be, you know, talking to the CEO and the CFO and all and all that stuff. I mean, after a while, it, you knew them as you knew them as from assistant managers up. And yeah. that's uh, that's a big plus. What was the most rewarding part of being in facilities Either from your start or all kind of all the way? You know, that's that's a pretty easy question for me. It's the. Um, it's the people, the people that I worked with, both on the operation side, the vendor side, the peer side. Because in Ponder, when I started Ponderosa, I mean, it, it was a well-run facilities department with, with a organizational hierarchy with forty-five techs, several facility managers. They knew what they were doing. We, we bought our own parts and did all of our own repairs. But it was, it was getting to know, it was getting to know restaurant facilities. You know, even today. You learn something almost every day in, in this business. I mean, you you never know it all, and it, and it's and it's always changing. It's all you know. It's not going in and pushing papers all day long. It's there's always something new every day. You can make the best laid plans for okay, this is what I'm going to do, do today. But then you know as well as I do that first phone call where the water heater's out. Well, or somebody drove through your the front of your store. You know your whole your whole day goes to goes to crap after that. But that's that's exciting, and it and it keeps you. Uh, I don't know. It keeps the blood flowing, and and the people, we're we're in a niche industry, and even the, the and I know you and you know several people that they've gone from vendor side over to the restaurant side or back and forth and different companies, but they stay in the they stay in the industry, and um, you know when we have our conference, we we'll have our conference coming up in Washington. It's like a family. It really is because we're not sharing. Uh, secret recipes. We're sharing facilities best practices, for goodness sake, and there's no secrets there. Yep. And it just, it's, 
I'm, I'm going to I'm going to miss that part of it when I retire. I, I I think people are critical. I'm one of those people, you know. For for most of my career, I was on the restaurant side as facility manager, and currently today and in, in prior, I've been, you know, I'm on the ser- the service side, the vendor side of the business, and and which is different. But there are ways that things that you you learn from one side that helps you on the other side. You know, yeah, that's that's another big plus that you yeah, have. I mean, one, one of the things I can do is look at people and and when we talk about things inside our company is speak from what would a customer say? What yeah. would a facility manager say and do, you know, and and try to give that perspective, which helps. But I think people and I think, you know, you're like, as you said, I could write down before I left on a Monday night. Here's the 10 things I want to work on Tuesday morning. And if I got to work on two of those, that would be wonderful the next day because yeah. of what's happened overnight or or whatever. But at the end of the day, for, for all the things that you worked on and you did, when that person picked up that phone and said, hey, thanks, I appreciate it. You know, even if you didn't get it right, you know, hey, listen, I, I you know, I appreciate Working on it, trying, doing the best you can, you know, help. Well, you were you were available, and in rest, you know, with restaurant facilities, you know, we all have to be available. Sure, you got to be <clears throat> available, and if you deliver, there there are, you know, tons of those opportunities. But when that person's like, "Hey, thanks," you know, yeah, that, 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 does, in, in that, that doesn't happen all that much. But when it does, it is it is special. You, you have to be really self driven a, a lot of times and yeah, just be right. be satisfied with getting projects and emergencies taken care of in a timely manner and economically the best you can and and just move on to the next problem. Sure. I used to tell I used to tell uh, some of my peers that you know it was like a mag when you're a director of facilities for a large chain it's like a mass unit because it's just coming at you right and left. And I if I made if I made a hundred decisions a day and fifty-one of them were right, then that was a good day. Because mm-hmm. sure. you're just going, you're just you, you got you you can't be stagnant in this industry. You can't. You've got to move. Yeah, exactly. I I remember telling telling uh, President Ruby. She she said, "Never wait on a call to make a call." I said, "Oh, don't worry. I don't wait. I go." <laughs> and and I said, "But I'm accountable for every decision I make." And if you want to question any decision I made, you certainly have that right. You're the president of the company. However, I'm going to tell you that when I made the decision versus two weeks later is a is a whole separate issue because I get the call and here's what's going on. Do you want to buy a new one? Do you want to fix it? You got seven minutes. And, and so I'm trying to figure out profitability, this lease, all that. Yes. Okay. And then I pick. Now, you let me have two weeks to make that decision. It's a whole different animal, but, but it's not, you know. And I said, I, I can give you reasons why for everything I've done, you know, and I'll be glad to do that. But you'll never wait because because I'm going. I'm going to make a call. I got to make a call. You can't you can't say, well, I'll get back to your fryers down. I'll be back to you in two weeks. That, that's not yeah, how and, it, and you're you're saying that you're, you know, you you hit the you were talking about, you know, you got to look at lease terms or, you know, is that store low volume? Maybe it, maybe it's going to close and you can just kind of, you know, just get it repaired or whatever. Uh, what's the history of the repairs now with CMMS, you've got all that right there. Sure. Back in the older days, it, it, it was, it was difficult making a quick decision as much as you wanted to, but there were some times that you, you couldn't wait any longer for your accounting people or, you know, your lease people, whatever that real estate people, you just had to go. 